Thank you. Good evening. I'm certainly pri privileged to be at MIT and humbled to speak on augmented reality solutions as part of a smart ecosystem to help save lives. As you mentioned, I've been a firefighter for 28 years. I've run somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 emergencies. And I'm a smart first responder geek. I'm seeking help in building a suite of solutions for saving lives through public education and first responder awareness. Beginning eight months ago, Kasumna's Fire Department started a smart concept on generous and needed donations of time, expertise, and equipment. We are very early in our work. One of the donations is Fire Station 74. We like to call them firehouses. It's a point cloud data from laser scanning, and it, with photogrammetry, is part of the base to provide multi-sensor fusion to attach to the XYZ coordinates. Some of our 190,000 area citizens could one day use this application to escape harm. For now, they can visit the apparatus room where we house our heavy rescue virtually in 3D. Data sets like this of our Station 75 could be sent to us while we're responding to a call so we can know the interior during an emergency. Where they're not available, we could use helmet-mounted sensors to capture data and send it to responders and commanders. We've begun an early prototype of a 3D sensing helmet. What if citizens chose on their own to use their smart 3D sensing high-tech new phones they got this holiday, scanned their home, and uploaded it to the cloud? What if they enabled us to have that information, gave us permission it could download to us while we were on the way so we could intellectually know the property? The goal is to help the citizens, their children, and of course the firefighters who might be crawling through the thick smoke and be able to see little. Precious few seconds between the oxygen-starved fire and the fire becoming this. In the United States in the past decade, 35,000 citizens have lost their life and fire. Tonight, before we're safe in bed, another will likely perish, and by morning, two more. What if they had a smart, augmented reality-enabled application on their phone to help them escape? What if we combined all the world's 3D data and we made the best computer game ever, the 3D game of life? We can call it Pokey 911. <laughs> I kind of like 911 Go. An application enabled with building information modeling, or BIM. This is our training tower. We'd like to integrate it into a community of open source data to develop it for various uses. Would any of you maybe consider helping us, for all the citizens, to learn about fire and life safety and to help them in the event of an emergency? This year, last year alone in the US, there were 1,250,000 fires. This is our BIM converted to a VR application. We can navigate it natively on a smartphone. In a recent tragic fire with dozens of victims, some texted their loved ones to say goodbye. What if they had a smart application? What if the firefighters could know their location in AR in real time and their life status? What if any of the 1,000 firefighters in the last decade and 1,400 law enforcement officers who've fallen in the line of duty what if they had a smart app? These are images from my fellow responders at Kasumna's Fire Department from last week. The solution certainly could have been used to help connect the responders with those in needs. More than 90% of our calls are in addition to fire calls, so let's develop it for a multitude of uses. Challenges? Certainly there's challenges. Funding for us is significant. We run 18,000 calls a year on an annual per citizen budget of $253. We'll need computing power, an interoperable platform for disparate sensors. The solution must be intuitive, fast, and relevant. Along the way, we can harden it for the two million firefighters and millions of police and medical 
responders. And in the meantime, build it for the 320 million Americans. Let them escape the fire or flood, earthquake, or other event that they need to, to get out from. We'll need to meet the challenge to respect privacy and civil rights. We'll need to provide multiple layers of security and redundant, uh, redundant securities. But mostly, it's for the most important right of all, the right to life itself. What if we integrated physics-based fire modeling, known as computational fluid dynamics, or CFDs? CFDs show us how a fire is likely to propagate over time. Could this be done in real time? What if we could know in advance in the coming minutes or hours in 4D? Could we provide that situational awareness for occupants of a 50-story building or to the commanders who have thousands of lives above the fire floor? What if, if they could know what was coming? And who has immersed themselves in a fire model? Certainly, it's possible. We have 3D models of our training facilities. Let's do some fire modeling. Then we can compare fires, uh, training fires, to plastics and other modern combustibles and how they, they burn. We can teach the public in virtual reality how to escape fires and the importance of always knowing two way, ways out. And the importance of shutting a door to contain a fire, if only briefly. In these moments, seconds count. What if the ATF and NIST and the other entities that do the difficult work of line of duty death investigations or deaths of citizens, what if they did less because people escaped through an AR app? And what if we immersed ourselves into these fire models? What if we learned from the previous losses about fire behavior, flow path, heat release rates, the importance of closing a door, and more importantly, when we're searching for someone in those precious few seconds about human factors and how they affect us. So I'm privileged certainly to share a slide uh, and supported by the Department of Homeland Security's Next Generation First Responder Group. They're doing work with the NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. And uh, needless to say, it's, uh, it's going to be some good stuff. Audrey will include computer vision and artificial intelligence. The auditory and visual inputs to the first responders will be based on their collective profile, their experience, their training and certifications. These concept slides are from Orbi Fire, uh, put together by the Digi Group. And they show a fire unit being dispatched based on real-time uh, traffic analytics, as opposed to the, the closest physical fire station. What does the current mapping tell us is a fastest station, send it. Then download the BIM into the, uh, to the crew so they can know the interior of the structure. Send them smart smoke, heat, and, bio, and uh, biotelemetry of the occupants and the, and the responders both so the commanders can know in smart 3D. Consider the digital ecosystem ever expanding and how the public of the future will learn in virtual reality how haptic touch and digital scent will allow children to smell the, what a house fire smells like and to learn their way out through a, a window through, in virtual reality. And certainly everyone should real, receive real-time data in earthquakes, floods, fires, or active shooter incidents. All humans need the 911 GO app. With your help, it'll be equipped with facial recognition, the Internet of Things, big data and smart cities with a side artificial intelligence. Our modest beginnings are made possible by, by generous donations, including our point clouds, our VR boxes, our AR glasses, all of it, our high-def VR um, headsets. And we at Kasumas Fire and the citizens we're sworn and privileged to serve would certainly appreciate the help. In the end, we all, all of humanity, need it. It'll be hard. It'll be a challenge, but it'll be fun, and we'll work collaboratively towards it. So we thank the many people who've generously donated their time, energy, and equipment, to my senior staff, my fellow firefighters, to my wife and kids, to all of you. Thank you for your time and consideration on building a smart, life-saving platform. Thank you.